updates. So this is a new type of uh, notifications. So these are, maybe if you're familiar with notifications and with the progress style notifications, these are higher priority and they're good. Material expressive UI that is coming. So yes. like it will be automatically updated or developers needs to do something else to, you know, adapt it to the, their well, apps. Yeah, so uh, nice. you're going to be left behind. So I feel like you're either, you know, riding the AI wave or you're going to be off on the shore and nobody's going to, you're not going to be, you know, uh, good enough for the market. Yes. Uh, we have Firebase Studio, we have Cursor, but we don't have a tool like this for Android developers. Hello everyone, my name is Bilal Khan and today we have a guest with us. Her name is Florina and she flied all the way from UK to talk with us about you know future of Android development and other things that uh, you might want to ask to her. So, hi Florina, how are you? Hi, I'm good, excited to be here. Yeah, so how is Bangalore? Oh, it's lovely. I mean, I feel like I got lucky with the weather because it's not too hot, it's not totally raining, so it's just right for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's never too hot in Bangalore. So um, the first thing that I would like to ask you is what's new in Android 16? Like it's coming, we all know, but what's new? What are the behavioral changes mm -hmm. that a developer must know about? Ooh, uh... I can share a couple of things that I have on top of my mind, but I would suggest that uh, he read our blog post. So like for every release, uh, we do a blog post kind of like outlining what is new. Um, I think I'm maybe biased with some of the stuff that uh, that's, uh, I have in mind just because there are things that maybe I'm more interested in. So one thing uh, that we also talked about today uh, in one of the sessions at IO Connect is live updates. So this is a new type of uh, notifications. So these are, maybe if you're familiar with notifications and with the progress style notifications, these are higher priority and they're good for like really uh, timely notifications. So let's say, you know, like you order food, you want that notification there of when your food is coming, regardless of any other notifications uh, you have. So that's what live updates help, helps with. Uh, it also comes with like a progress style um, a notification template template and updates there. Um, so yeah, I think that's one. And then also this is something that we're also working with like different OEMs uh, to also include in their own uh, system UI. Uh, so that's that. Um, I know we have several updates on media and camera as well. Um, so I think we had like low light boost uh, last year, but then we have more updates on that. Uh, uh, then I know we have more effects uh, for media and camera. Um, yeah, for widgets, we also have more APIs. So for example, we know that you know developers are building widgets, but they want to know, okay, but like, is my widget actually impactful? Like, are people interacting with it? So we're adding APIs to help measure this. Um, so yeah, I would say check out the blog post because that has all of the, the in and, ins and outs. Okay, I have one more question about this and it is about material expressive UI that is coming. So yes. like it will be automatically updated or developers needs to do something else to, you know, adapt it to the, their apps. Yeah, so, uh, so material uh, expressive has kind of like two parts. Yes, it's part of the, the OS, but um, the changes that you'll see will be kind of like on the CCUI level, so maybe like your notification bar is going to look different and stuff. Um, some of the Google apps uh, are already actually starting to look uh, a little bit different adopting uh, the material expressive. But for you as a developer, we're actually publishing uh, uh, Jetpack Compose material expressive uh, APIs. I think they're available for views as well, but as I said, like this podcast is going to be very biased towards the stuff that I like. Okay, most. so again, new APIs and new functions are coming. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not only that they're coming, they're already here. Uh, so I think around I.O. we published, uh, or actually even before I.O., uh, we published an alpha version of the material APIs that include uh, a lot of these expressive APIs. Not all the components are there, but like the basic function, uh, I would say not even the basic, but even a bit more than basic functionality is there. So, you know, the shapes, uh, um, the typography stuff is there. Already some of the, uh, the components like buttons and so on uh, have this expressive uh, stuff. Uh, and like, 
to be honest. Okay, can I can I continue more on this? No, yes, like, to get me started on expressive, I'm gonna continue starting on expressive. Sure, sure, you can. The part that I like most with with expressive is that I feel like it's pushing the boundaries of just how UI looks. Um, I feel like a lot of the apps, you know, like maybe they, you know, you show text, but it's maybe you play around a little bit with the font. Uh, but you see with expressive actually, you know, playing around with the shapes more, having, you know, like I don't know, there's uh, the text that's using variable fonts, for example, that I don't think a lot of apps these days are taking advantage of uh, and you can really change the look and feel of your app you know you can feel it make it more playful and so on so yeah i'm sorry i really like it so <laughs> yeah yeah so and another tricky question is the future of android development oh. in context of the developer so somebody in college right now starting with a career in android development what do you think what is going to happen in the future like ai will write all the code all the apps or humans are still needed mm -hmm. uh, it's a tough question um, i think it's it's a matter of uh, and was was the when you say future how near are we talking um, so if i think about in general like android development right now you can definitely see that you know we have so many improvements and developers are able to be faster with ai uh, where you know like you're able to start an agent to do something and then meanwhile you can figure out what else you want to do and then you just you know review the stuff that uh, the agent has done and improve it i think there's still a need uh, so with the state of the models right now i think there's still a need of android experience uh, because maybe the, the agent creates something that works but you know maybe it's not exactly as you would like it, or maybe it's not exactly uh, fitting the style or the architecture of, of your company. So I think right now it still is a little bit of help, uh, regardless of the of the AI you use. Um, I think with time is going to be interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball mm -hmm. uh, to say exactly what's uh, going to happen, but I do know that if you're not looking to, into AI, you're missing out. Um, I feel like. Everyone, all developers should at least understand what AI can bring to their development skills, um, particularly. Um, you know, they need to understand the concepts. You know, when someone says model, what, what is that? You know, understand what the, what the context is, a context window, understand a little bit the tokens, because otherwise you're going to be left behind. So I feel like you're either, you know, riding the AI wave or you're going to be up on the shore and nobody's going to, you're not going to be, you know, um, good enough for the market yeah i'm also an android developer and we actually started using ai in day-to-day -day tasks like it's mm -hmm. it's very helpful yeah so and the the simple things like generating models retrofit and all the stuff it can generate seamlessly so it's, yeah. it's really helpful it can now even generate the ui you give the image it generates the jetpack compose code mm -hmm. so yeah it's being helpful and uh, one more thing i would like to ask is uh, we have firebase studio we have Cursor, but we don't have a tool like this for Android development. Like we have Gemini that is in the IDE, but it doesn't create a project from the prompt. It mm -hmm. cannot go to the files and edit as good as, you know, Firebase Studio or Cursor. So any tools coming up? To do so uh, Gemini and Android Studio is actually one of our biggest, if not the biggest focus on, especially like on the tooling side, we're focused a lot on uh, the AI side of uh, Android Studio. Um, new project might be something that we're working on, <laughs> but um, I think in terms of like modifying multiple files, uh, I don't know, I find uh, Gemini Android Studio quite impressive with the stuff that it does. Like you can definitely, like the, the agent mode that's already available in uh, the Canary version um, can easily modify stuff across, across files. Um, so yeah, actually, if anything, I would be very curious to hear what are the things that are missing uh, and how we can make uh, make our products better. So I think the easiest way to to tell us what you need is probably creating an issue tracker or I don't know, like tag me on LinkedIn or something, because like we want to know, you know, what is missing? You know, you, you mentioned the new project. I think that's cool. That's valid. But I, I think I'm also interested in like, you know, uh, double clicking on that. What does that new project mean? What do you actually expect from uh, uh, from the the AI? So then, um, you know, we make sure that either the things that we're already building or the th things that we've already shipped are indeed fitting with uh, your expectations. Uh, for example, like uh, every app needs authentication, right? Mm -hmm. So we give a prompt and it generates the basic mm -hmm. setup and structure, 
and change the package name. Mm -hmm. So still we need to, you know, copy paste a lot of things. If a prompt can generate the whole project with a basic setup like authentication, uh, it could be helpful. Cool, that's good to know. That's good to know. Thank you. Well, uh, I know authentication is something that's on our uh, uh, on our list together with like, you know, we've been working on Compose, uh, but we still have a couple of things in mind. And then we want to make it easier also for developers to to build things like, you know, pass keys or building adaptively for large screens. Okay. so. Uh... Android has a big developer community. I'm part of Google Developer Expert for Android. So I want to know like any recent thing that is being built after the feedback from the community. Yes, yes. Because um, you said recent, uh, I think NAV3. Uh, actually, the fact that NAV3 itself uh, was built uh, is a result of the community needs. Um, so, just to give a little bit of a uh, of a background, so we heard, I think pretty much ever since we launched Compose, we heard that like oh you know like navigation Compose is like okay but like it doesn't really feel so good and developers kept on giving us feedback, um, and that's what made us be like okay yeah like hold on like we need to rethink this like we keep on hearing these things more and more so then. Um, we kind of like, you know, really took a step back and rethought how navigation uh, in Compose should work. And we published this NAV3 library. But not only that, like in the publication of it, we actually work with, um, uh, with the community. So we have what we call like an early access program where we work with different folks to try and see like, you know, you know, try it out, try it out in your pet projects. And then also like, you know, given your company's app, like what do you think would be missing from, uh, from NAV3? And, so then we can make these as good as possible. Okay. So we are talking about Compose. So it is the new standard. I also use Compose only and I'm forgetting about XML, but do you have any apps at Google that's still using XML or you have plans to migrate or yeah. it's totally Compose at Google? Um, I wish I could say it's totally composed. Unfortunately, you know, we're talking about apps that have, you know, more than 10 years of, uh, uh, of development behind them. Um, so yes, some of them are still using views, but, uh, many of them are, um, already sh shipping with Compose. So I think one that we talked a lot about is Play Store. Uh, they've been one of the early adopters of, uh, of Compose, but then um, Google Maps is using Compose. Fitbit, Fitbit Read, uh, I think last year completely redid their, their UI and their theming system. And, you know, rather than do that in views, they uh, just use Compose for that. Um, so yeah, I think they're, a lot of apps that are already using it in production, many apps that are looking at it and yeah, but it's, some of these apps are big. Like I think uh, when I joined Google, I, I actually realized how big we're talking. So yeah, it's a pain to migrate everything to, mm -hmm. you know, a new tech whenever it comes. Exactly. So uh, Gemini Nano, like I checked the docs. So Gemini Nano is available for preview, but it is only available for uh, pixel devices and not everybody has the pixel devices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you have any plans to, you know, make it public for average kind of Android devices? Like not everybody owns a pixel. Mm -hmm. So uh, two things. So right now um, the Gen AI API is using ML kits for things like you no know, summarize proofreads. Uh, those are in beta uh, and it's not just pixel devices. And you were uh, gonna ask me about this. So uh, I looked at our official documentation, so like the ML kit docs and it's yes on uh, like Pixel 9 Pro and, and so on, but then uh, Motorola Razr 60, OnePlus 13, Oppo, Samsung Galaxy S25, um, uh, Vivo X200, Xiaomi 15, uh, as well. So like it's a set of devices. It's not just But I, I was talking about the Google Edge SDK that is I think not available. Ah, yeah, yeah. The um, Google Edge SDK. Uh, yeah, that one is not the... Uh, yeah, so I would recommend using the Gen AI ML Kit API yeah. for now. And that's the one that we're, we're working a lot on as well. Um, so yeah. Uh, but in any case, like we are looking into making Nano available on uh, on as many devices as possible. 
Okay, Florina. So last question. I am very ex excited about this product of Google that is Android Extended Reality. Mm -hmm. So when we can expect the devices in the market, mm -hmm. like we don't know anything about the device. We have the emulator and we can, as a developer, try some SDKs, but when we will expect the devices? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so we have what we've been talking about at uh, Google I.O. and also here at I.O. Connect uh, is two types of devices. One is headsets. So for that, we're, we call it Project Muhan and we're working on that with Samsung. So I don't know. It depends on Samsung on this one. And uh, the other one uh, is uh, glasses. So this is for this, we're working with uh, x -Real. So this is like the project or I think it's called, to be honest, between these two. Again, my 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 bias here. I'm really excited about glasses. It feels like uh, I don't know, like it's going to be such a a regular thing. Like in the same way we have phones, in the same way we'll probably have glasses, and then we're going to be using Gemini to help us do all of all of the things. So yeah, I'm really curious about that. And in general, like how this glasses technology is going to evolve uh, in the next few years, and maybe even in the next few months. I'm really curious to see them going out. Uh, thank you, Florina. That was a very insightful session. And uh, it was very nice meeting with you at IU Connect and Google. I hope to see you next time. Thank you for okay. having me. Thank you.